What's up lads, Brandon here with another video to make you 1% better. The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter is the Bible for men wanting to master the challenges of women, work, and sexual desire. Not only does this rank out at number one on Real Social Dynamics reading list, but I believe it's required reading for every man on the planet who wants his personal and love life to flourish, hands down. Strap yourselves in. This is a longer video than usual because it has too many golden nuggets I can't bear to leave out for you guys. I'm not just going to blatantly throw information at you and hope they change your life. Instead, I'm actually going to share how I integrated this wisdom into my own life and relationships, and how you can too. Kicking it off with number 12, choose a woman who is your complementary opposite. The fundamental grounding of Dieter's teachings lies in the idea of sexual polarity. Masculine and feminine energy complement each other. You are either masculine, feminine, or neutral. According to Dieter, 10% of couples are neutral, 10% are made up of a feminine man and a masculine woman, and 80% a masculine man and a feminine woman. You are always attracted to your sexual reciprocal, so the takeaway here is to choose a woman who is your complementary opposite. 11. Your purpose must come before your relationship. If a man prioritizes his relationship over his highest purpose, he weakens himself, disserves the universe, and cheats his woman of an authentic man who can offer her full, undivided presence. 17-year-old hormone-driven me was so batshit crazy about my 14-year-old girlfriend that I completely ditched my friends, goals, and dreams. I thought I was doing the right thing by investing 110% of me into her and the relationship that I forgot about myself. I quickly became clingy to the point where I'd get home from school and just sit there gay-pied at my computer anxiously waiting for the clock to strike 4.12pm, the time when I would normally get a message from my girlfriend, every single day. I now realise this is one of the reasons my relationship ended quickly. I took this lesson into my second relationship, which made it 10 times healthier, it lasted 5 times longer, and my clinginess vanished. I always made it dead clear to my second girlfriend that I valued my goals and dreams first, and our relationship second. Number 10. Your attraction to the feminine is inevitable. I grew up in an environment that discouraged sex before marriage, so part of me felt it was wrong to be attracted to women at my age. On a subconscious level, I was also averse to letting my sexual energy flourish due to the stereotype of that douchebag guy that doesn't care about girls and just wants to get laid all the time. While I was playing World of Warcraft, boys around me were getting laid, which was a fact that I was completely oblivious to throughout my high school life. I finally realized it's okay to be sexually attracted to women. In fact, it's healthy and beneficial. It kills me to see men suffering because they deny their attraction to women because of their parental or cultural upbringing. Don't make the mistake of denying your healthy, natural desires like I did. 9. Never change your mind just to please a woman. You should always listen to your woman and then make your own decision. If you choose to go with your woman's suggestion, even when deep in your heart you feel that another decision is more wise, you are in effect saying, I don't trust my own wisdom. You are weakening yourself by telling yourself this. You are also weakening your woman's trust in you. Why should she trust your wisdom if you don't? My second girlfriend would always try her best to help me with directions, despite being absolutely hopeless at it. It's this way to McDonald's, sweetheart. No, it's that way, Brandon. The submissive part of me would sometimes obey her suggestion, even though I intuitively felt it was completely wrong. Oops. Nine times out of ten, my intuition was right. I've come to learn to always follow my intuition, even if it turns out to be wrong. It will strengthen me and earn me more trust from my woman in the long run. Number eight. Stop hoping for your woman to get easier. Let's say after years of effort, you earned a million dollars. You feel happy and successful. You come home to your woman and share the news with her. I just made a million dollars today, honey. Well, that's nice. That's nice? You know how hard I've been working for this? I know. It feels like I haven't seen you in months. Did you remember to pick up the milk on the way home? Oh, sorry. I forgot. But who cares? We could buy a dairy farm now. I asked you to pick up the milk three times this morning, and I put a note on your briefcase. How could you forget? I said I'm sorry. Look, I'll go get the damn milk. So here your girl is testing you. 
Your success doesn't mean shit to her unless you are free and loving. She wants to feel that you're impenetrable as a superior man, so she pokes you in your weak spot. She wants to feel your happiness is not dependent on your response, so don't freak out. Moving on to number seven, praise her. The masculine grows by challenge, but the feminine grows by praise. As boys, we've always challenged each other. I bet you can't run as fast as me. You may have a habit of challenging your woman, but the feminine side of your woman thrives on support and praise. Telling her that you love the shape of her body will be a much better incentive for her to exercise than telling her, I hope you don't gain any more weight. Praise her daily, multiple times. I've seen the powerful effects of this in my own relationship. Not only that, it was extremely common for my girlfriend to share the compliments she got from people when talking about her day. Six, what she wants is not what she says. Sometimes a woman will make a request of a man in plain English, not to get him to do something, but to see if he is so weak that he will do it. In other words, she is testing his capacity to do what is right, not what she is asking for. In such cases, if the man does what his woman asks, she will be disappointed and angry. The man will have no idea why she is so angry or what could possibly please her. He must remember that her trust is engendered not by him fulfilling her requests, but by him magnifying love, consciousness, and success in their lives in spite of her requests. Now, I believe it takes time to pick up the signals that your girl gives you when asking a request. Fortunately, my girlfriend often made requests blatantly obvious for me through body language, even if what she said didn't match. For example, Sure, Brandon, we can still go to the city today. By learning to pick up her signals, it was clear to me she didn't want to go, despite what she said. When I made the right call, her face whipped up a massive smile, and she would humorously go, good, because I didn't want to go anyway, and then we would go watch TV or something. Number five, she wants to relax in the demonstration of your direction. Dita says, she needs to feel that she can get on your train, and that is going exactly where she wants to go. You need to know where you are heading and how you are getting there, financially and spiritually. You don't need to make all the money in the world, but you do have to show you're responsible for finances and that you strive for a relationship with your woman that's more than work and watching TV. Number four, ejaculation should be converted or consciously chosen. Dita claims that whilst your girl may enjoy seeing you relax as you come, another part of her wants to feel more, like you're in complete control. She wants to feel the fullness of your presence, the invasion of her body by your consciousness. Most guys don't want to penetrate or ravish their woman after an ejaculation or two. You no longer feel desire, which your woman can sense. Dita articulately says, why should she expose her deepest part, her most vulnerable heart, only to have you convolute in a paroxysm of self-possessed gratification, followed by your withdrawal into post-ejaculative relational non-interest? By cultivating your ability to control when you come, your woman will sense it and be able to relax in the force of your loving. Moving on to number three now, ejaculate up the spine. Through breath, feeling, and intention, you can dramatically improve your orgasms. The first step is to forget what you learned while masturbating as a teenager. Instead of tensing your muscles as you get turned on, learn to relax them. Next, redirect your attention. Feel your woman more than your own sensations during sex. Thirdly, breathe fully during the day so your urge to ejaculate diminishes. I suggest checking out Elliot Hulse's videos for more on that. There's an exercise you can practice to avoid premature ejaculation. It will allow you to convert your orgasm so instead of shooting out your tallywhacker, you shoot the energy up your spine for a potent bodily explosion instead of a shallow orgasm. Learn to control the muscles in your gooch, that bit between your tallywhacker and the chamber of secrets. It feels like you're trying not to take a crap. Practice contracting and pulling these muscles upwards, doing sets of 15 or 20 and holding as long as you can. Do this three to four times a day. Eventually, you'll be able to hold these contractions as long as you want. By combining deep breaths up your spine with the upward contractions of your gooch, you should lose a bit of your erection as well as the need to ejaculate, giving you complete control. Number two, you will often want more than one woman. In more blatant terms, you'll want to fuck all the bitches, even if you're in a happy relationship. Your masculine sexual desire is inevitable. But Dita says, he should also know that acting on such desires, though temporarily enlivening and exhilarating, often ends up complicating his life far more than the occasion itself is worth. In other words, 
Cheating on your girl with another woman for a short burst of satisfaction isn't worth it in the long run. With that said, Dita says that how many women you get with completely depends on your purpose. If your purpose is to be a nice boy, then you should do what makes your woman happy. But if your purpose is to enjoy physical pleasure, no matter the consequences, then as Dita says, you should screw as many women as you want. Ultimately, you need to figure out your purpose and evaluate the consequences of your actions. Moving on to the final lesson, insist on practice and growth. Now this one sounds boring, but it's so incredibly important, which is why I've revealed it at the end of the video. As Dita says, a superior man wants her to move in the direction that most serves her growth in love and happiness. I believe a healthy relationship is one in which you build each other up rather than trying to mold each other into your depiction of what is right. As I mentioned earlier, I always encourage my ex-girlfriend to follow her dreams and goals, not mine. But keep in mind, as a man, you must be following your own purpose and goals before you can help your woman grow. I'll leave you with one last quote from success coach Tony Robbins. If you're not growing, you're dying. That includes a relationship with your woman. If this is your first time here, be sure to watch my Power Series playlist so you can become a better man. A shout out to Mimi89, Story Eater Michael, The Art Bros, and Jesus. Thank you for supporting me, I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and keep becoming 1% better.